I'll start off by emphasizing uh, one of our fundamentals is to be transparent with everyone um, and very importantly is to look at simplicity so when we talk to anyone that people can understand it uh, I always say if you can't explain something in a very simplistic manner you don't know the subject um, I think what is important for us is we always uh, bring out our results one month uh, after year in uh, in this case we're going into a close period on Wednesday uh, and we are uh, bringing out our results on 27th of March. So within a month, we bring out our results. And I think we've been complimented in the past uh, on the transparency and the openness um, of that. I think what is also important for us, we're always open to communicate uh, to anyone, uh, to the media, to uh, asset managers, to investors. Uh, myself and Andre spend a tremendous amount of time um, working with people. Uh, addressing people. Um, I personally spend about uh, seven to eight weeks a year uh, talking to analysts, uh, addressing their questions, and if we can't answer, we will address it immediately. Uh, as you all know, and Viceroy has admitted this morning uh, on Bloomberg, um, they haven't been in contact uh, with ourselves. Um, they know our office is open. Um, so they brought out a one sided uh, report, which we believe a lot of things are factually completely uh, incorrect. Uh, we've also got a problem with the fact that they um, uh, short the stock and then bring out a statement. So they've got a profit motive behind it. I think they can do much more to get the facts from, from both sides. We have uh, given instruction to our attorneys to take it up with the FSB uh, because we're not happy uh, that the way um, um, they actually uh, go about it. I think what is for us is important, it's not only affecting uh, Capitec, uh, it's affecting um, the, whole, the other banks, it's also affecting um, the trust in South Africa. Uh, I think uh, currently where we are, we need to focus on, on growth and, and growing the economy. Um, and if you get a report like this, it just puts people in a negative space. I think we had extremely positive news in the last couple of months and it's important to add that. As you also seen the Reserve Bank, um, I was in touch with them about um, 10 o'clock this morning, informing them of the report um, and um, they, out of their own will, brought out a statement and saying um, they support Capitec and uh, we are going concerned and there's no problems with Capitec. That news is really um, uh, out. Um, I just want to also highlight that bringing out and linking everything to, to Steinhoff, um, the so-called investment in Fulcrum. Um, if you look at the book uh, of Capfin, that's about a 1.5, 1.8 billion book. Uh, the real problems with uh, Steinhoff goes about um, the auditors that don't want to sign off the statements uh, and so-called so uh, problems on the accounting side. It's got nothing to do with uh, unsecured uh, um, uh, lending. Um, I just want to emphasize as well for us what is important in, in Capitec is that um, we believe we've built a bank on very strong fundamentals. Our people is very important. Um, we've got a very strong um, focus on the unsecured credit markets. That's where we actually saw opportunity. But in the last couple of years, we've established a very strong uh, client base, a very strong transactional uh, uh, base. Um, over 40% of our income is now coming out of transactional side. Uh, there were some reports that came out a year ago where it shown that we've uh, actually saved clients in the banking sector in South Africa 19 billion rand, uh, where Capitec has forced uh, to change um, com competitors in the market. Um, and then on the retail side, we've done it extremely well. We've said in, August, in September when we brought out our results, we will pull back in certain areas. We see stress in certain areas uh, on the uh, higher risk clients, lower income uh, clients, and we've communicated it. Given our transactional base, it gives us that opportunity uh, to do it. If I look at um, the report, we've brought out a full uh, report um, or a sense statement. Given the questions that have been asked, you've got access uh, to it. I think I just want to highlight certain things that maybe has not been mentioned in the, in the sense. Um, the first thing is um, we got our financial people this morning to analyze the report, uh, to go through the report uh, and to see if we can uh, balance it. Uh, and we're struggling uh, to understand, to reconcile the numbers uh, that they've done. 
uh, on the repayments of loans in a particular year. We've published a figure of 18 billion. They are at 16 billion. If we look at our arrears, uh, we're talking 5 billion, they're talking 3 billion. Uh, we don't understand how they're getting to those numbers. Uh, and we're still analyzing and try to see if we can get to, to a better understanding. Uh, and we'll keep you up to date. Uh, what we believe there's a lot of factual incorrectness uh, um, um, in, in these numbers. They've done a comparison, of, for example, on arrears, uh, where they're looking and comparing us on arrears. Why is our arrears uh, so low? It's a very straightforward answer. Uh, we write off a loan uh, if it's in arrears after 90 days. The other people don't write it off. Uh, they keep it on their books um, for 180 days and longer. Uh, so in our case, we, uh, if a client is in arrears, maybe let's say he's got two or three loans, um, the moment that client is in arrears with one loan, we provide on all loans, uh, and like I said, we write off at uh, 90 days. So we haven't got non-performing uh, loans. Uh, so that makes it extremely difficult, or you can't compare our arrears with other arrears. Um, I think if you look at our risk appetite, the way we uh, analyze um, clients, we're very strict on um, affordability on behavioral model, where we actually look at the client's uh, behavior, external, internal, as well as banking, as well as we look at where he's employed. Um, so we make, uh, make differentiations between people that's employed in a high risk area. Uh, so it's a completely different, uh, or we, we treat uh, um, credit completely different. I think if you look at a comparison between ourselves and African Bank, uh, when the demise of African Bank happened, we made it clear that we are different before and I think everyone understood it afterwards that there's a difference. Uh, if you look at, we've got a very strong transactional base, we've got uh, retail funding, uh, and then our credit, our credit risk appetite uh, is completely different. Uh, if you just look at uh, insurance, um, insurance was always part of our fees and with the new regulations that came in last year, the 4 and 50, we're doing it on a declining uh, balance. Uh, for example, if a client had 100,000 Rand and he's repaying that amount and it drops to, let's say, 20,000, we're only charging the credit life on that 20,000. Uh, where other organizations is on that initial capital, overstating it uh, and charging them an extra fee. Um, so we're very uh, strong on the compliance side and, and on the regulatory side. I think what is also important is if you look at the cases that they refer to, um, they got that from court papers. Um, uh, I think it's conveniently, um, but they haven't published our, our oppos uh, opposing uh, uh, papers. Uh, those opposing papers are available. Um, so it's, it's nice if you've got a one-sided um, uh, uh, attack. If you look at the uh, two or three clients they referred to, it's interesting, Tobiani, uh, that particular client was never in arrears with ourselves. He always uh, repaid us. He repaid all his other uh, credit providers. He always had extra cash available. And when he was retrenched, uh, we covered uh, his loan fully through our retrenchment and cover. Uh, and exactly the same with other, other clients. So we're quite comfortable with, with our affordability and we're quite comfortable with what's, what's, what's uh, happened. I think maybe the other area that I can emphasize is on the people side. Uh, we extremely focused on, on our people. I uh, believe it's important that our people are, are, are inspired, they understand where we're going, why we do thing, certain, certain things. Uh, it's interesting that they've just uh, asked people that has left us or people that was dismissed. Uh, now you will get a one-sided story if you only go and ask certain people. I don't know why they didn't have interviews with ourselves uh, or certain people that's currently uh, employed. It's interesting for me how the uh, branch managers is reflecting that our branch managers on average is getting a 13,000 rand salary, salary that factually they, the average is 22,000 rand. So there's a lot of these factual information that, that, that is actually uh, um, uh, uh, incor incorrect. Uh, I think if I look at uh, on the deposit insurance side, they're talking about a 2.3 billion uh, exposure. Uh, proposed regulations came out in May. Uh, it's not been finalized. We're still working with the industry. 
Um, we've looked at it and the exposure is much less. Uh, again, uh, it's just showing there's a different uh, approach. If you look at, uh, I think trust is a very important aspect for uh, retail deposits to actually deposit their money with ourselves. Uh, we've always said we want to build a bank that's 100 years old uh, plus. Uh, we've always been transparent uh, with our people. If there's bad news, we communicate that, uh, we say that. I believe uh, the biggest compliment we can get is um, the statement from the Reserve Bank. They get monthly our figures, um, they analyse it, they've sit uh, every six months with us going through in detail. So I think um, that gives you a clear indication that there's uh, no concerns. Specific question. Yes. Uh, is there any, any kind of indication that you have rumors of people withdrawing their money, saving their bank accounts? Um, what is your information on that? We've uh, evaluated our deposits during the day, and it was business as normal. We just had a lot of people inquiring, uh, asking questions. Um, and I think the statement, uh, we spend quite a lot of time communicating to our branch personnel, informing them what is happening. Um, the reply that we gave to Bloomberg this morning, we gave to our staff, we gave them the News 24 article by the Reserve Bank, uh, and that's quiet down quite a lot. We've also sent SMSs and communication to our depositors so that they're fully aware what's what's happening. Um, so, so far, we're quite relaxed. Session. You said it's, uh, the report is filled with inaccuracies. Just what do you think the motive behind this a report like this could be? I don't, I don't want to speculate on the, on the motive. Um, I think I, I've said that uh, for me I've got a concern if a report comes out and it's, uh, um, there's a lot of inaccuracies and they're not prepared to talk to us. Um, uh, and when you short a stock um, and then bring out a report, there's for sure a profit motive. Um, so, but I don't know what the real motives. And like I said, we've always been open to anyone if they've got questions. Um, so they could have got all of us and then brought, brought out a report. Cabinet has a track record of 17 years of total transparency. Um, so uh, this is our approach to any, any crisis. So, yes. so I'm Sasha Planting from MoneyWeb. So Sasha. I've putting the Viceroy report aside because I think it's quite sensational. But there are other fund managers that have approached you um, over the last two to three weeks with very specific concerns. Um, and the, the one that comes to mind is Benguela. Have you responded to them personally and in detail on their concerns? Benguela wrote to me and they gave us a deadline of the 5th of yes. February. So we're well within the, yeah. um, um, the deadline of that. It's actually on my, uh, on my table at the moment, just uh, finalizing it. Um, but uh, again, there's no concerns from, from our uh, point of view. And I actually said it to the CEO as well. Andre, you communicated with me afterwards saying, um, he's very glad that we, are, uh, that we have open um, stance on that and we'll communicate with him. I actually invited him to come and see me or if he cannot come and see me I will fly up to Johannesburg to have a detailed discussion with him. And I was actually planning to go up on Friday and then the vice report came out this morning. Yeah, the, besides um, the FSB, um, are you considering any other sort of action, whether it be um, criminal, civil and or regulatory against vice -Rock? The focus now is to get the facts and figures uh, out and to handle um, the clients and handle the media. Um, us. Um, we've just taken the FSB approach, of course, we, uh, and we will consider our options going forward. So, so the, the concern, a large part of the concern from Benguela seems to be around the rescheduling of loans. And they seem to be suggesting that a very large part of their loan book is now rescheduled loans. So my first question is, do you charge a fee when you reschedule loans? No, no, we don't. Because it looks like you do. Well, we actually refuted that comment in the first line of the letter to them. I find it a bit surprising that you have all the details of the Benguela letter. But maybe if I respond to them, just ask them for the answers. And, and the rescheduling of loans, is that... Rescheduling of loans, which... You know, but if, if you look at... Let's use a simple example. If a person is on maternity, what do you do? That person hasn't got an income for a four-month period. So what do you do? 
You sit with that person, you, he's got, let's say, UIF, he gets 40% income, he loses 60%. She. So, or she. Uh, <laughs> uh, so what do, you, what do you do in that case? You can, you've got two approaches. You can be, say, sorry, you need to repay, or you say to that cli client, okay, right, let's, you've got the circumstances for a four-month period, uh, and how are we going to overcome that? And I can use numerous examples uh, uh, like that. We've got very strict rules on, on rescheduling. Uh, we disclose that in our financial results. Um, in September 2016, um, we actually on the asset managers, we spend a full, Andre spent a half an hour on how do we reschedule, how do we provide, what do we do uh, on it. So it's not a matter if you walk in and you get rescheduling. A big portion of our clients are declined on rescheduling um, because they don't qualify. Um, so, but it's part of, if you provide credit, you need to look at the circumstances of a client and you need to uh, act uh, uh, because you need to build a long-term relationship with that client. Um, can I just respond one final thing on that? Um, if, in, if we reschedule the loan, we don't release the provision on the loan. We actually keep it there for a period of 12 months until we're very sure that the client has actually rehabilitated. And there's clear evidence from the statistics that in many cases, in line with our rescheduling policy, it is the right medicine for both ourselves as well as the client. One of the, the key claims I believe that Bystroy made is when they say, in their view, the bank may have to write off a total of 11 billion in what they say are bad loans. Do you want to respond to that? We got about three CAs today to look at that 11 billion number and we can't reconcile it. So uh, Andre also spent some time on it and we can't get to that particular uh, answer. Um, so um, that's the difficult part. Somebody does a sum, you don't understand and they don't disclose 100% how they do the sum. So we will, we spend three to four hours today on it. We'll spend more time. There's people now working on it, trying to understand it. Uh, but there's numerous things that we've picked up that we disagree completely. We, um, just just uh, again re-emphasizing, we write off all outstanding um, pay, um, repayments um, over a three, uh, after a three month period. So our um, arrears coverage ratio as it is, is already over 220%. So we, where it gets to 11 million, it's, um, it's, it's very difficult to calculate. Okay, that's a wrap. Okay. <coughs>